Good morning. We we'll welcome you and ask you to join us in worship as you believe that God joined us in the worship gathering. This service is a direct broadcast from our sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church, 534th Street Northwest in Faribault, Minnesota. Our pastor, Reverend Paul Rieger, will be conducting the service with our pastor, Reverend Dr. Michael and Larva, delivering the sermon entitled, Weeds and Wheat. Our organist will be Bar Maraska. The service... Our liturgy this morning will be Divine Service 4 on page 203 of the Lutheran Service Book. The radio broadcast this Sunday, July 23rd, is given in loving memory of Marlene Althon by Todd and Jane Vogie. As the congregation greets each other before the service, we invite you to join us for our opening hymn, Sing Praise to God, the Highest Good, number 819 in the Lutheran Service Book. Let us gather together, quiet our hearts, and prepare for worship.
please rise. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and before one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of my Lord Jesus Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Together, let us pray. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of our final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Our first reading this morning comes to us from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading this morning comes to us From Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia in verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew from the 13th chapter. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles and to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went to, into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed, th who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated, and I invite the children forward for our children's message. Well, good morning to you. How are you today? Well, look over there to our left. You see that flowers? The flowers smell nice, don't they? I can even smell them from here. You can smell them from here? That's good. You don't have an allergy, do you? No. No, good. And there to the right, church always has flowers in it. The flowers, of course, always come from where? What do you think? The garden? That's good. Now, if you have a garden, you can have flowers, but you could also have weeds coming up, too. Also, you could also have food. You could also have food in the garden? You're right. Food is important. And yeah. if you... Yeah. At our house, we have a garden with strawberries. You have a garden with strawberries? That sounds delicious. Where, where, where is this? <laughs> My house is in the mountains. Minnesota and... Mounds View, Minnesota. Okay, thank you. I'll just, uh, I'll drive around honking my horn, finding a few. Uh, well, that's okay. I mean, but if you have, if you have a garden, then you have to keep weeding it out, don't you? Because mm -hmm. if you don't do that, well, then you have weeds and you don't have a garden. And also, in the rocks in the front yard, we have some weeds growing out. You have weeds growing out of the rocks in the front. And some of our tools and some of the chores, you do weeding? Do you do the most of the weeding? Mm -hmm. You do the most of it, okay. Mm -hmm. And we also have a trampoline backyard oh. with only, only right there. Yes. My brother, he goes on there every morning. He goes to the trampoline every morning? Mm -hmm. Not okay. every morning. Not every morning that your parents know of. You're right. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's a point to this. Um, we're going to have our sermon today about, about the weeds and, and, of course, the wheat. And God, of course, compares the world itself to being the two kinds of people. We want to be wheat or flowers or something nice to other people. Because Jesus, of course, was good for us when he came to save us. And as we think about it today, think of ways in which you could help other people. Now, that being said, let's have a word of prayer. And repeat after me, dear Jesus... We thank you for the gospel 
and we pray that we could be a blessing to others in your name. Amen. Thank you for coming, and Pastor Rieger will give you candy as we consider singing our next hymn. Please join us for our next hymn, Almighty God, Your Word is Cast, number 577 in the Lutheran Service Book. Please join with me in prayer. A blessed Lord, you've caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace, never hold fast, the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our lesson for to our sermon today is the gospel lesson, which was read in your hearing from Matthew chapter 13. As always, I pray the Holy Spirit to grant to us a living faith. As you meditate upon this parable of the wheat and the weeds. Now Jesus, of course, tells a parable, which is a earthly story of the heavenly meaning. It's something, of course, of which you can really see and you can grasp in some earthly measure. But somehow it talks about some heavenly uh, principle, which is going to happen or is about the kingdom of God. And so he begins. There's a man who sows good seed in the earth. I mean, that only makes sense, doesn't it? If you want to have a good crop, well, then you use good seed. And whatever you put in the ground is what you're going to get out of the ground. If you put in corn, well, then you get corn. You put in beans, you get beans. And you're looking for that harvest and the importance of the fruits of the earth. Now, as we find also in this, this parable, Jesus explains it, and that helps out. As he tells it very plainly, he says that the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. Now, if you look at that, then God's word is that seed. It's perfect in what it does. The good news of the kingdom, it's planted everywhere. And it's just as we saw in last week's parable, it brings forth an increase. Now the entire world then being God's field, he would have the good news of Jesus Christ be brought to everyone. That Jesus died on the cross for people's sins and rose again from the dead, and that the matter of salvation is firmly secured by believing in him. There can be certainty in salvation, and that there can be absolute assurity that's based on what God gives us in his grace and not on what we do. That's a powerful message. And yet, despite the fact we find that God's seed is everywhere, and that grace abounds everywhere, and we find that the seed is bringing forth children of the kingdom, as it says in Galatians 3.26, you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. 
and that the Spirit helps us and keeps us. It says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we don't know how we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groans that words cannot express. He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And yet despite all these good things, despite the, the Spirit's intercession, despite the fact that the Word is going out every day, you probably would be very surprised that in the field of God that besides the fact that there is wonderful acres of wheat, there are also weeds. Because even as it says in our lesson in 1325, but while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Now think about that. On a human level, that's a very cruel thing to do. I don't think if we had a garden, we'd like it if someone put, in, put grass seed all over our, our garden. It makes the work that much harder. And imagine what it's like in Jesus' day, before the day you could actually spray weeds or you could take care of them. You had to actually pull them by hand. That, by the way, was one of my summer jobs. Before they could spray mustard, I would go out with my cousins and we could be paid by taking up mustard from, from the wheat. Now, you were, got 10 cents if you got 100, which was pretty easy. But you were docked 50 cents if you pulled out one stock of wheat. <laughs> it could make money, but you had to be careful. You know, this is where which Jesus, in the which he lives. I mean, you had to actually go out and physically weed, but what do you do? As we're told in our lesson, that the wheat and the weeds look identical. It's not notice this event until they both grow up together. Now, as you can imagine, look what's happening. Those weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. I mean, that bad seed is sin and all the evil that takes place. And it takes root. And the angels are surprised. And they say to God, didn't you actually plant in good seed? And God says, yes. Well, the angelic understanding of what this should be done then, well, don't you want us to go out and to take care of, of that weedy problem you have now? And yet the owner does something most unusual. He says, let both grow now until the harvest. Now, that's an interesting phrase. I like that in some ways, and I, I don't like it. Think about all the things that the weeds, the sin, the trouble that the evil one causes in this world, all the war and hardship, the sickness and the problems, the weeds inside our personal life, and that in the world itself, the trouble that is always around us. And yet God himself is allowing this to happen. Do we enjoy that? Probably not. And yet, God himself promises that he can use this even for our benefit and for our spiritual welfare. Why do trouble things happen in our lives? Why do the weeds constantly crop up in, in this regard? Because God is making us more Christ-like, more like him. And out of every catastrophe, God himself says, even as he promises in Romans 8, 28, that he can make even the most evil thing that happens into something good. And as always, I use the crucifixion of Christ as an example. Had you been beneath the cross of Jesus, you may have wondered, would any good come out of that? Here is the one innocent man who is God, who comes to the world, and what is he doing? He's suffering painfully on the cross. He who's righteous, the only one who's righteous, is dying. And you might just shake your head and walk away, you might be confused as the apostles were and his followers. And yet there in the cross, God himself is saving the world from its sins. Saving the world for heaven. And in all the other things that happen in our lives, God himself is using that. And he will make us more Christ-like, as I say. And he will also help us in our spiritual life to be more like him. Now, in that other way in which we look at this, consider this. Inside even uh, the church, besides the world, we find that there's wheat all around us. God himself and his word has established a church here on earth, which continues to grow. Even here in Trinity, it continues to grow. As you see by our thermometer in the back, I'm actually shocked. 
I hope you are. Did you see how much that thermometer has gone up? We are so close to actually making our goal of actually building a new offices. It, it's incredible. And yet, despite the fact that there is those who are believers, even as it says in the small catechism, we talk about two parts of really the church itself. Now, what am I talking about in the relationship of our parable of weeds and wheat? There are those in the visible church who are all gathered together. And we're all together. People are usually there to your right and to your left in church. And if you're like most people, you're sitting in the exact same place that you have every Sunday for years. Except for the front pew, which is always empty. But you have the idea that you're all together. And that is visible church. It's all the people on any given church anywhere. Anyone who's on a church roster anywhere. Visible. You can see it. Now, that's one thing. The second part about which we're told in the Catechism is this, is that there's the invisible church. That is all those who have faith. But only those who have faith are a part of this. What makes it invisible is faith, which is invisible to the eyes of which God knows who is a part of his church. That's different from visible church, because visible then is only those who you can see. Follow? Invisible, only believers. Visible, everything else. In other words, the visible church is those who are believers and those who are unbelievers. You have wheat and you have weeds. <laughs> and God himself knows the difference. Usually, of course, as the Apostle Paul writes, you can see by their fruits and how they produce. And after all, of the Spirit-led life, that one that believes in Jesus as Lord and Savior produces the good fruits of righteousness. But the fact is, is that even within the church then, shame. The devil has planted his own. There are some people who come to church for whatever reason. It may not be godly. It may be to be seen. It may be for business interests. Who knows? Or there may be people even on a roster of a church who list their name down and, but never come to church and never want to be removed because if I'm a part of the church, doesn't God have to take me in on the visible end of it? <laughs> and the answer is no. As Billy Sunday, the great evangelist of the last century said, just because you live in a garage doesn't make you a car. Just because you put your socks in the oven doesn't make them biscuits. Try it sometime. It doesn't taste good. But you get the idea that here it is. Besides the fact that there's wheat, there's weeds. And it happens all the time. And God is going to let both sets of evil and believers live to the very end. That's how it's going to be. But I pray, though, dear friends, even as we talk about this garden imagery, and those of you who guard, and I know a lot of you do, you know what it takes to make a garden happen. I mean, you have to go out there and you actually have to take care of it. You have to plant the good seed. You have to water it. You have to fertilize it. And you have to weed it. Murphy's rule of, of, of gardening is pretty clear. If you pull out any plant that is good, it won't grow back. But if you pull out a weed, it will come back. If you don't do something about your garden, it becomes just weeds and there is no garden. So it is with the Christian life, the believing life. And it's a matter of us understanding that weeds can grow in it. And weeds choke out faith, destroys us. How much problems or trouble or apocrypha do we let be leached out of our lives? How much trouble is there? Or do we ignore the problem and think it's going to go away? You can't do that if you don't do it if you don't actually take out the first weeds out of your life or out of your garden of your life where will you be? I remember reading a story about a woman in St. Louis she noticed a few bees buzzing around the attic of her home and since there were only a few bees she made no effort to deal with them but over the summer the bees continued to fly in and out of the attic and the woman remained unconcerned unaware of the growing city of bees that just took in residence uh, in her ceiling. Soon her entire attic became a hive. 
and the ceiling of the second floor bedroom finally caved in under the weight of hundreds of pounds of honey and thousands upon thousands of angry bees. Well, the woman escaped serious injury, but she was unable to repair the damage of accumulated neglect. And there, in that way, is a parable about our, our lives as well. We let things go. We don't deal with them. We ignore what is disturbing, yet inconvenient, until it's too late. And maybe our ceiling crashes in. Neglect, it's a powerful word. And in our lives, it maybe describes many family relationships. Neglect. Spouses neglected. Children neglected. Later, older parents neglected. Responsibilities neglected. Opportunities neglected. It's a specter that cons all of us. Neglect. And that's something which we can't allow in the Christian life. It's a matter of doing the right thing when we know it. Not to earn heaven again, dear friends, but because of who you are. Luther is so right in this regard. That we ourselves then put ourselves in that position where we read the Bible. And literally, as I prayed again, that old collect inwardly digest it and make it a part of ourselves. That we ourselves avoid the weediness of this world and do what is right. That we are praying to the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. That we do what he asks. That we love our neighbor as ourselves. <laughs> and dear friends, we remain that way because God desires us to be Christians. And why does God allow wheat and weeds to exist in this world, these two types of believers and unbelievers? Because of that simple scriptural lesson as I move on to this point, God desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. While the weeds or the people live in this world, they may become believers. And while wheat may become weeds or unfruitful, the weeds themselves may believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. They may believe finally on their deathbed, or they may believe through some Christian who comes into their life. They may believe because the Word strikes them in such a way, and the Holy Spirit then waters that good seed. And so it goes on. But don't be surprised, dear friends, because God himself is talking also about the end. There comes, literally as he says in Scripture, a final harvest. There is an end of it all. And as you look at our lesson, it tells us that he will send out his angels and they'll weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. These, of course, are weeds who are burned. But look at this burning of which we find in verse 42. He will put them into the fiery furnace. And it's not going to be a matter of it just being done just like one snapping their fingers. This place is called hell. And it says there is weeping, uncontrollable weeping, and that there is gnashing of teeth. I don't know, have you ever been in such pain that you actually gnashed your teeth and crushed them together in such pain? Like some old cowboy movie where they give you a bullet to bite on. Gnashing of teeth. It's a disturbing image. And you know, it's a lot like this if you were in the dentist chair and you were there for 24 years plus eternity, and the dentist is working on your teeth without Novocaine. Gnashing of teeth. A grisly and horrible image which is meant to really stick in your mind that you know that hell is not a place for you. It's a place for the devil, it's a place for his angels, but not for you. Sometimes I run into people and they tell me, well, are you giving them fire and brimstone this Sunday? And you know what? If someone from hell were to stand here and to preach to you, you would hear the most powerful sermon that you had ever heard. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a real place. It's an unfortunate place. And God himself, again, desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that is a sad story. But the last verse is the one that gives us hope. <laughs> the one that tells us about the believers, the wheat, the, that finally there comes an end to the sorrow. There comes an end to the trouble. There comes a trouble to a time to end where your cross will be lifted and the vexations removed from your life. It will be like this, as he says, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. What a beautiful place heaven is to shine in this place. 
imagine an advertisement. Free, beautiful homes be given away in a perfect city. Wouldn't you like a free home? 100% of your utilities would be paid for. No light bills. There's perpetual glory all around you. Permanent gold pavement. <laughs> Nothing undesirable will be ever allowed inside. Everything is going to be new. There'll be perfect health. There'll be immunity from accidents. The best of all society will be there. There'll be beautiful music, free transportation. And all of this, and even more, dear friends, as I give my own earthly explanation of heaven, given to you and all who believe in him. It's a beautiful place, and one of which, even on our earthly pilgrimage, day by day, we are being led home. <laughs> and finally, I like what Jesus says in the end. He says, he who has ears, let him hear. Do you have ears, dear friends? I hope so. It means that to hear it and then to apply it. And I pray that we would, in that power, moved by the Holy Spirit, believe and do all that he asks for the glory of his name and the welfare of those around us. And he who has ears, let him hear. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds that one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to please rise. And let's confess then our Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we confess then together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us continue in prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we thank and praise you for all that you give us, that you have planted us firmly in your church, that we would be your good wheat but we pray, Lord, that you would help us grow together with the weeds. Help us to know good from bad, right from wrong. Help us to bear that good fruit which we are designed to bear. And at the end, help us be separated and gathered together in righteousness. But with all these things, Lord, help us to know you. Help us to know you and to proclaim who you are to a world who needs to hear you. Help us to show people that you want to plant this good seed. Help us to bring people into your, your good field where they can be firmly planted. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with all of our loved ones, but we especially lift up for strength, comfort, and healing Jim, Larry, Lisa, Robin, Mandy Bloom, Cynthia Karen, Hub Clater, Austin Ellerbush, Marion Hagel, Elwood Lips, Jane Lures, John Maluski, Siegfried and Irene Mittman, LaVon Morgan, Murtis Reck, Donna M. Schultz, Roger and Eva Del Swichtenberg and their son David, Francis Swee, and Jerry Rieger, and all those names which we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with our nation, bless our country, bless our leaders, give them wisdom as they lead us, and help us to be good citizens. Be with all of our loved ones and those who we know and even those who we don't know who are in nursing homes, who might be missing their homes, who might be feeling lost or lonely. Help us to minister to them. Please be with our military and their support personnel as they serve this nation locally and around the world. Help us to support them as well. Be with uh, all the families, Lord, especially those families in our congregations, and be with us uh, as we 
support them in all of their needs. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us with all that we need to take care of these families, especially as we organize and get everything ready for vacation Bible school. Help, uh, help VBS not to just be a ministry for the kids, but also help it to be a ministry for their parents so that all might uh, teach you and who you are in their homes, uh, but also bless us in our efforts for VBS and bless us with uh, many families that we might be able to bless. We pray, Lord, for those who are pregnant, for those who are unborn and those who are born, praying that you would help us to support life at every stage and be with Faribault Lutheran School as they continue in their rest for this summer. Be with the staff, their students, and their families, especially with uh, Mr. Winter, who will be joining us soon as our new principal. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with the family and friends of Roger Bartelt, the brother of Gloria Spitzak, who passed away on the 18th. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them as they mourn the loss of a loved one, but that you would give them hope and give them direction and give them guidance and give them people who would love and support them in their time of need. Give them the glory and the joy that they see at the end that Jesus has waiting for us. Lord, in your mercy... Lord, we pray that you would be with all missionaries serving all around, the, around the world, praying that you would bless them with your Holy Spirit as they proclaim your word, especially be with the project video team of Don, Pam, Eric, Doreen, Bobby, Tassany, Hannah, and Jasmine. We thank you for these people, Lord, especially for Jasmine, whose leadership has helped them to open more production centers and reach more people. We thank you, Lord, for all of the materials that are, being, that are being produced, but we especially thank you for the Lisu Studio, which is helping 850 Lisu congregations in an area in our world which needs you so badly. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless this ministry as they are doing great work to preach your word. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, God, we pray for us here at Trinity, praying that you would help us and be with us as we reach out into this Faribault community. We thank you for all the opportunities you give us, and we pray that you would give us eyes to see where to go and ears to hear where we are needed. We pray, Lord, that you would be with all of our Trinity family, but especially this week be with Keith and Rhonda Pretchell, Ryan Pretchell, Kurt Preevy, Mark and Susan Preevy with Alex and Sam, and Natasha Pumper and, Ke and Kylie Brunner. Lord, also be with us as we seek to add on to this building Help us in our planning, our fundraising, and the actual building. Help us to use this building to reach out to people. Don't let it be an idol for us, but let it be a base of operations for spreading your kingdom and the message that you have given us all. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue our worship by gathering our tithes and our offerings. I also encourage you to fill out the little red friendship pads at the ends of your pews.
Let us rise as we continue on page 5 of our worship folder with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company in heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Dear Lord, hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. Welcome to the table of our Lord. As the congregation comes forward for communion, we'd like to invite you to join us in the following hymns. Your Table I Approach, number 628 in the Lutheran Service Book, and Praise and Thanksgiving, number 789 in the Lutheran Service Book.
as we call, come to the close on our service, we pray that it strengthen you as bless you and strengthen your faith in Christ. This service is a direct broadcast of Trinity Lutheran Church in Fairwood, Minnesota. The broadcast this Sunday was given in loving memory of Marlene Alfin by Todd and Jane Vogie. Our pastor Aaron Paul Rieger conducted the service with our pastor Aaron Michael Lerner delivering the sermon titled Weeds and Wheat. Our organist was Bar Maraska. If you'd like a copy of today's sermon, please write to us at Trinity Rail Club, 534th Street, Northwest, Fairwood, Minnesota, 55021. Please be sure to include your name, return address, and today's date. would also like to thank the following. A gift of $100 was given to Trinity Radio Club by Harland and Shirley Davis. Until next Sunday at 8 a.m., we turn you out to the downtown studios of KDHL.